Well, the, the policy was based on, on basically two parts. The, the first part was that we would look at a number of reactor designs and resolve all safety issues so that a company wanting to build a nuclear power plant would know there would be no major safety issues arising once they placed the order. The second element was to encourage a number of uh, companies to come into the market so it wouldn't just be one company building nuclear power plants, so there would be, again, some competition between them. And I think the third element, which is what made it politically feasible, was that the government would not provide any subsidies for nuclear power plants. In other words, the nuclear power plants would have to cover all their costs from the income of selling electricity into the wholesale market. Yeah, the, the process seems to be going quite badly wrong. The promise that there would be no subsidies never seemed very feasible. And the, the, the promise has evolved somewhat so that now the promise is there will be no subsidies for nuclear power that are not also available for other low carbon technologies and of course that opens the way for you to design a subsidy that's, that's meant for nuclear power and give a small amount of, of money to renewable technologies at the same time. Uh, on the technology side of things, the idea of getting two or three reactor designs approved has also fallen down uh, and of the four reactors we started to evaluate three have been withdrawn from the process so we have just one uh, reactor design that is still being evaluated and it's still a couple of years away from being in a state where the regulator will give it a safety certificate on the point about the number of companies in the market again we started with three different companies wanting to build nuclear power plants but the position of two of them now looks very weaker and I would expect them both to withdraw leaving just Electricité de France as the, the only company likely to build in the UK. Well the nuclear vendors worldwide are clearly very anxious to get new orders so there will be interest if the Czech Republic opens a tender for nuclear capacity uh, and I would expect that you would certainly get uh, interest from Arriva, the French company, Westinghouse, the Japanese owned company, probably the Russian company Rosatom and maybe one or two others so that there would be interest but whether that interest would turn into solid bids uh, is not so clear because the big element that you have to get in place to have a nuclear power plant ordered is the finance. You have to convince banks, financiers, credit rating agencies that the risk of building a nuclear power plant is not going to fall on the uh, company building the plant and therefore onto the banks lending the money. So the banks need some insulation from it. So whether that interest would turn into solid orders and whether those orders would be at a price that is feasible is much more open to doubt. I think the problem is, is Chess, and it's not Chess as such. It's the same for any company wanting to build a nuclear power plant, that, that uh, the companies lending them money will see investing in a new nuclear power plant as a very expensive uh, venture and they don't want to be exposed to that risk so they need some form of insulation from that risk such as a loan guarantee which would mean that uh, the government of the company would pay back the bank if Chez, for example, were to go bankrupt or were not able to repay its loan. The, f the Finnish experience is, is very, very specific. I mean, Finland is dominated by electric intensive industry, the paper industry, metals industry, chemicals. So there are a large number of companies that need cheap electricity to survive. Uh, uh, and on that basis, they place the order for Olkiluoto 
and committed to buy the output of the plant for its entire life at whatever it costs to generate. So from the point of view of a financier, that was a good deal because the income of, for the plant was guaranteed, was guaranteed to cover their costs. The problem is that most consumers will always pay their bill. The exception is the energy and electric intensive industries because 10, 20, 30, perhaps even more percent of their costs come from the cost of buying the electricity. So if the electricity is expensive, they are uncompetitive on world markets and they're out of business. So whereas a household consumer, the price of electricity went up by 50 percent, they'd complain a lot but they pay their bill. Uh, a paper manufacturer, if the price of electricity went up by 20 or 30 percent, they'd stop producing. They can't go on. So the, the finished model has some superficial attractions, but when things go badly wrong uh, and the price of power produced is much higher than expected, then you can see, begin to see that, that the system has its own set of risks. As I said, Finland has its own particular industrial structure. That's not the same as the Czech Republic. And I wouldn't expect, even if it was desirable, that the Finnish structure would be replicated in other countries. Part of the problem which a lot of people realize is that the costs have overrun, that they are now nearly double what they were expected to be. The bigger problem for the company building the plant is that they contracted to sell the power from the output from, from the plant from May 2009 onwards. Of course, now the plant is not going to be oper in operation until 2014. So the company has to fulfill that contract in some way. So it's got to go to the market and buy all the power that it expected Alkiluoto to produce from the competitive wholesale market. Now, if they are very lucky and there is a huge rainfall or snowfall over the next five years, they might be okay. But they are taking a big risk over that period that the wholesale price will not be very high because they will have to pay that price to replace all the output they were expecting to get from Olkiluoto. Replacement power costs are, are a, a very big element and one that people don't always see.